Correct. And all right, thank you everyone for for coming or for for sticking around for so long. This is SSMS, that's SQL Server Management Studio, and T SQL Tricks, uh, working smarter, not harder. Um, first, it was in the previous deck, but I do want to give a shout out to Redgate uh, for making today's event possible. There's a lot of, of wonderful community events, uh, and Redgate has been a great patron of the the Microsoft Data community uh, for as long as I can remember. They're always uh, making sure to support community events, and this is no different, so we are very grateful to them. The whole reason we're able to be here today is thanks to Redgate. Uh, my name is Bob Pusateri. I am a, a jack of many trades, master of none. Uh, I am a friend of Redgate. I've been one for, for several years. We're a group of people who uh, help work with Redgate's product team, uh, provide provide advice, help promote products, etc. cetera. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP, I'm a Microsoft Certified Master. Uh, I, I've kind of worked the gamut in, in data careers, starting out as a software developer, uh, then a DBA, uh, consultant. Now I kind of do uh, architecty things these days. Uh, I'm very active in the data community in the Chicago area. I used to run help run one of the user groups in Chicago. I still help run our SQL Saturday event, which we uh, we rescheduled for mid-August, and we're very hopeful we're able to have a uh, in-person event at that point. Um, and I also help run the, the not-for-profit we have in Chicago that uh, makes the user groups and the SQL Saturday possible. Probably the most important thing on this deck is my contact information there, which I will show again at the end. Uh, and with that, we'll actually move into the demos because this is a 100% demonstration session we have here today. Um, no slides, which I like a lot. So we're going to be working in SQL Server Management Studio, which uh, I, I know you've seen several times throughout the day. It's kind of the, the bread and butter of the Microsoft Data Platform. If you were present for... Uh, Bob, can I pause just a second? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I'm seeing a question in the chat saying that somebody can't hear anything. Somebody uh, I'm can't not hear having anything. a problem. So if somebody else could uh, send a question into the chat, just confirming whether or not they could hear something, that would be great. Let's say if you can hear me, I would hope other people could, but I hope so. Strange okay, things happen. We do have we do have a couple other people saying that they can hear. I just okay. wanted to make sure before we went on. Are, are we going to get to uh, see you as well as hear you, or just hear? Um, just here. I, I am not camera ready today, so I figured we could keep the, the focus on the content instead of of myself. But Okay. Um, sounds, sounds good. Over to you. Thank you. No problem. All right. So if you were present for the, the last session, you saw Deborah, and Deborah was doing demonstrations in Azure Data Studio, which is a newer um, Microsoft Data Platform client. Um, SQL Server Management Studio is, is the older one. It's been around since 2005 or so. Um, and when Azure Data Studio came out, there was all kinds of talk about whether or not it would replace SQL Server Management Studio. That is really not the case. Um, they are both terrific products. They have different uses. Uh, SQL Server Management Studio is better at some tasks. Azure Data Studio is better at other tasks. Uh, Deborah, for one, was using the, the SQL Notebooks feature, which you will not find in SQL Server Management Studio. That's an Azure Data Studio feature. Uh, but SQL Server Management Studio is not going away. Uh, in fact, I have heard that uh, Microsoft has actually released SQL Server Management Studio uh, more frequently in the past year than they ever have before. So development is not winding down by any means. There is plenty of active development going on in SQL Server Management Studio. Um, let's get started then. All right, so I have a, all the demos in this presentation are based on a database I published on my blog of Chicago parking tickets. You can see the link here. You don't necessarily need this database, but all my example code is, is based on it. Um, some rather simple queries from those tables. It is about a 500 megabyte download, and it's about a four gigabyte database, and it contains all the parking tickets written in the city of Chicago from 2003 to 2016 or so. It's about 37 million parking tickets. So a lot of interesting data in there to scan through. But we're really not focusing on the data today. We're just talking about features of SQL Server Management Studio, how they can make your day-to-day -day job easier if you're using it. So the first question I like to ask is, what version of SQL Server Management Studio are you running? Um, 
as I said, it is released more frequently than ever before, so there's a lot of versions out there. The current version is version 18.5, was released last month, I believe. If you're not using, um, it used to be tied to the version of SQL Server. So you would install SQL Server, let's say 2012 or 2014. Your install media would contain a copy of SQL Server Management Studio, and that's where you got it from. Um, later in 2016, Microsoft decided to decouple it. So now SQL Server Management Studio is not on the SQL Server install media anymore. It's a separate download. You can uh, use the search engine of your choice and search for SQL Server Management Studio download and be taken to the Microsoft download page. Uh, this is also where all the updates are posted. So the reason I'm pointing this out is if you're not using the latest version of SQL Server Management Studio, consider upgrading to it. It's easy. You don't have to go hunt down the install media or ask, you know, your IT department, where's the SQL Server CD so I can get to it or whatever anymore. You can just download and install it. And it works for all supported versions of SQL Server. And quite honestly, it works for a lot of the unsupported versions as well. They didn't uh, specifically take support away from older versions uh, as they continue to develop Management Studio. So with that in mind, let's dive into some demonstrations. Um, if you have an error in your syntax, SQL Server Management Studio has gotten better over the years at pointing out exactly where that error is. So if I click and execute this query here or try to, it's going to spit back an error, right? It's going to say, hey, there's a invalid column named T and it's saying it's on line number 109. Now, I have line numbers enabled, so I can very easily tell where line number 109 is. Um, and as I said, these error messages have gotten better in, in older versions of SQL Server. It would return the line number in the batch instead of the line number on the file, and, and things would get, get annoying. But what you can do regardless of that is if you double click on the red text, it will actually go and highlight where that error is. So we see the, the issue is that the column is called t.unit, except the name unit actually exists. The problem here is I used, if you look, I used a comma instead of a period. So it's pointing out that, hey, T is not a column name. You know, it should be T the alias and unit is the column. Uh, but the idea here is if you double click on an error, it will very often take you to exactly where that error is if uh, you're unable to figure it out from the align numbers. Number two, we have some query shortcuts that are quite handy in SQL Server Management Studio. If you were to go, and I'm going to walk through these menus to show you where, if you go to Tools and then Options, Environment, Keyboard, and Query Shortcuts, you can actually assign keyboard shortcuts to specific stored procedures. And there's some baked in by default. So you see we have Alt F1 assigned to SP Help. Control 1 is assigned to SP Who, and you can assign to Alt, Control F1, and then all the control number keys. So you don't get a ton of options, but for the things you really use frequently, this can come in very handy. And what you can do is you can highlight something, and that will be passed to the stored procedure as an argument. So if I highlight dbo.ticket, which is a table name in my sample database here, and hit Alt F1, it's actually going to go ahead and run the SP help stored procedure on that table and return to me all kinds of information about the table, the columns in the table, how they're set up, et cetera. So when you have your, your most frequently used procedures, you can actually go ahead and assign these keyboard shortcuts and use them even quicker if you would like. Number two way that SQL Server Management Studio, or number three way it can help us is with what are called snippets. And snippets are basically quick queries or other snippets of code you can insert anywhere, right? This is also a feature of Visual Studio because since 2012, SQL Server Management Studio has actually been built on top of the Visual Studio shell. So if you right-click in your document and say insert snippet, it's actually going to come up with a little menu here, and I realize it's it's kind of small. I can zoom in here in hopes that it shows up a little better on the webcast, um, but then I can't interact with it, so I'm going to zoom back out. But you have all these folders um, of code snippets. So let's say I wanted to maybe create an index. I can hit index, create a basic index, and it will actually go ahead and give me 
uh, the template of how I would create an index and I can just fill in the highlighted portions with my index name, my schema name, my object name, the columns it's being created on, etc. This is all built in, uh, but you can add your own snippets if you like. They are written in as XML files. Uh, and I have the example here. This is what an XML file looks like for creating actually a, a XML index. Um, but you can write your own snippets or copy and paste them from elsewhere um, and have pre-baked code ready to go that maybe you won't have to go look up or copy and paste from another document. And I'm guessing we aren't getting any questions so far if Chris isn't uh, cutting in. So that's cool. We'll just keep on pushing through here. Number four, we have line numbering. Um, and I have line numbering enabled already. I always like to see line numbers when I'm working with code of any type. Uh, but by default, it is not enabled in SQL Server Management Studio. If you'd like to turn it on, you can go to Tools and Options and then Text Editor, All Languages and General, which I realize is a long chain there. And what you have here is you end up with a checkbox for line numbers. You can uh, enable if you like, hit OK, and line numbers will show up or disappear as you like. Again, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of having line numbers present just for, for ease of readability. I hope we're getting our request in the uh, chat to zoom in a little more, if you can make the text a bit bigger. I can definitely make the text bigger. Hang on one second here and we'll try to do that. I realize, uh, not sure how it shows up on everybody's screens. Um, okay, I need to go to environment, fonts and colors. And we'll crank this up to like 17. I don't know if that helps at all. Uh, I can see that still being a little small if it was full screen on a big monitor. We can go even, we can go a little bit bigger here. We'll go up to 19. So maybe that helps. Okay. Maybe, I can make it, maybe I can make it bold too, actually. Hang on here. We'll do that uh, if it lets me. Will it let me? Maybe it won't. Bold checkbox. I should have done that. And it just undid everything I did. Oops. I'm trying here. Okay. Sorry about, sorry about that. No uh, worries. What's weird is I clicked bold. It still says it's supposed to be 19, but then it went to, I don't know what it did. Okay. So I'm going to uncheck bold and see if it goes back. What the heck? Okay. Let's crank it up even more. 20. Ooh, there we go. We're really big now. Okay. I don't have, okay. the, fortunately, my demos aren't very, very verbose in code, so this shouldn't make a difference. But No, that, that looks good. Uh, so in, in the chat, just let us know if it needs to go even bigger, but I think yeah, that's good for now. Thank you. Happily do what I can for you. So, all right, next we have drag and drop object explorer names. And this is one of those things where when I, when I give this presentation in person, I usually see a few heads uh, start to explode almost. It's hiding in plain sight. If you have objects in object explorer, like, you know, a table name or a view or something, and you really don't like typing that name, yes, there's, there's IntelliSense and whatnot that's built into Management Studio if you have that enabled. Uh, but what you can also do is you can click and drag this object into the text editor and it will just copy the name. And this is good for almost any object you can have an Object Explorer. So you can copy the name of a table, you can copy the name of a column, uh, you can take the folder that's called columns and click and drag that over and it will copy all of the column names, comma delimited. Uh, so this can be very handy if you're lazy or if you have tricky column names or object names in general. Um, you, you've been able to do this for a long time, but this is one of those things that is really, in my opinion, hiding in plain sight. And you also have a few options uh, with how these copy. If you go to Tools, Options, SQL Object Explorer, Commands, here, uh, Tools, Options, SQL Server Object Explorer, and Commands, you have two options I'll zoom in on here so you can see. Um, you have drag and drop here, so you can choose whether or not to put a schema and a period in front of them, which I always recommend as a best practice. Um, and you can also surround your object names with brackets, which if it's going to do that for me for free, why not? Uh, so I leave those set to true, but you can change them if your, your coding standard or your, your employer's coding standard or the client or whoever uh, doesn't like those. So that's drag and drop text. 
The next one is a simple execute shortcut. Um, so you know you can execute a, a query very simply by just hitting F5, and that will will execute whatever's highlighted or the entire file. Um, but the other way to do this is with Control E, um, and I think Control E is actually way better for for a couple reasons. I was always a big fan of F5 originally, um, but then keyboards started changing, especially on laptops. And now some laptops flat out don't have function keys anymore. Those that do, they're usually pulling double duty and to get it to serve as the F5 key, I now have to hold down some other key to make that happen. So now I'm holding down, you know, function, function calculator to make F5 or something like that. That's annoying. Whereas control E pretty much works everywhere. Um, I'm even, you know, I can be working in a virtual machine from a Mac and control E will still work. Um, so I just tend to use control E everywhere now to, uh, as my shortcut, uh, keyboard shortcut to execute code in general. Um, you could, of course, hit the execute button up here, um, and it still recommends F5, but I, th I think Control E is way better personally. Bob, right. we've got one more question. Sure. Uh, you took a previous one. Uh, where did the folder with the snippets come from? And can you run back through that again? Where did the folder with the snippets come from? Yeah. So it, um, I mean, where is it? Where is it located on the on the uh, on the drive? That one I don't remember off the top of my head. But if you say if you right click and say insert snippet, it will take you to there. Um, and it is in it is in one of the the SSMS uh, folders. Is this tree that you can get to? Okay, I'll look that up while you continue, and I'll post it in the chat. Okay, that'd be excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, this next one is also a little a uh, little doohickey in my opinion is always hiding in plain sight. Maybe you're working on a really long script or a really long stored procedure and you have your, your create procedure with all your parameters defined up here and you're working down at the bottom and now you need to go back up to the top to see something and it's really annoying. Um, so what you can do, and I'm zooming in here and I will draw a little box around it. There's this little doohickey up in the corner here. Uh, which which you may or may not have noticed. This is the vertical splitter bar. So if you click and drag this, you will actually split your window into two. And now you're looking at the same file in two different places. So if you have a really long section of code and you need to reference something far away off the screen, you can drag that splitter bar down and work much more efficiently. I use this all the time. I think it's wonderful. And when you want to get rid of it, just click and drag the bar back up bar will disappear, that little icon will go back. So this is if you need to see the same piece of code twice or two locations within the same file is, is another way to think of it. That is that is your godsend right there. This next one is similar, but this actually creates, uh, lets you have multiple tabs open at once. These are called tab groups. So if you have more than one tab open, which we do, I have, I have the script I'm doing and I have a second tab sitting here ready to go. If you right click on a tab, you get an option for new horizontal tab group or new vertical tab group. Um, if you click one of these, it will actually go ahead and create a second group of tabs. So now you can see two files at once, right? So the splitter bar lets you see one file in two different places. This is actually letting you see two files at once. And you can move files between these tab groups by saying move to, there's move to previous tab group or move to next tab group if you wanna move them around from there. Um, you can also split it in the, the horizontal direction if you wanna say new horizontal tab group, if you prefer to work this way. Personally, I, I'm not a fan of horizontal tabs, but vertical tabs are great, I think. Uh, but you have options here just by right clicking on the tab name uh, to choose how it's displayed. Obviously, the more screen real estate you have, uh, the better off you are with these options, but they're great. Continuing on, talking about tabs, if you have lots of very frequently used files you like to keep open, you can pin them. Uh, there is a little tiny pin icon in each tab here, uh, and if you click it, that becomes a pinned tab. Uh, basically, just means it's going to be parked in that location and not move. Uh, there's a couple options you can choose uh, that will apply to pin tabs as well. If you go to Options, Environment, Tabs, and Windows, you get, uh, for pin tabs, you get the options of showing them in a separate row. So if you pin it, it'll actually go up to a top row and you'll have two rows of file tabs. 
um, show the pin button, which is on by default, and then maintain pin status if document is removed. Basically, that means that if you close a file and reopen it, it will continue to be pinned. Um, I've used the pin tabs in a separate row sometime. That's kind of handy. So if I enable that and I pin this file, now you'll see it actually created two different rows of tabs. I have two files sitting essentially on top of each other. And if I unpin it, it'll go away. Um, that's, that's a preference, but pin tabs for very frequently used files can be handy. All right. The names of the tab. So by default, SQL Server Management Studio tries to cram a ton of information in that tab name. It'll have the server it's connected to and the session ID, the SPID, uh, and eventually the file name and the username of who owns the session. Well, it puts a bunch of stuff in this tab and, and you end up with tons of text that never fits there anyway. And honestly, a lot of that information's at the bottom in the corner, right? I could see what server I'm connected to uh, and what user and what session and what database I'm in. I don't, I don't need to see it in the tab. It might be helpful for some people, but I've personally never found it uh, to be helpful. So if you go to tools, options, text editor, and then editor tab and status bar, there's a bunch of options in here and you get four choices for tab text. So you can choose do you want the database name in the tab? Do you want the file name, the login, or the server name? And you can have any combination. Uh, by default, I believe they're all true. I just like to see the file name. Uh, I keep everything else in the status bar, which is up here. Uh, the status bar is the bar at the bottom, and there you can have the database name, the login name, the server name, some of the same things that are in the tab. I leave those on. I like having information down in the status bar, but not in the tab name. So you can kind of customize this. Uh, for your preferences. Resetting the window layout, number 11. So if you end up in a situation where you, you move stuff around and you have things open and you've got all kinds of stuff open in your environment and now you just wanna go back to normal, there's actually a key for that, there's an option. So if you go to window and you say reset window layout, it's going to take you to the default window layout, uh, which by default is this so it will give you your object explorer and your file tabs uh, which is you know when you initially install management studio that's what you get you can also save window layouts and make other ones the default depending on how you like things set up i tend to work with the default one but if you ever want to undo everything and just go back to you know what i would consider normal reset window layout will take you there in one click Presentation mode. Okay, so we're actually in presentation mode right now. This was added in SQL Server Management Studio 2017. Um, and for people like me who are trying to, you know, present to a group, um, you usually want a bigger font, as you saw as we, we further adjusted. Uh, but what happens is there's no easy way to go through and adjust it and then go back. So they actually created presenter mode. So if you were to go to the quick launch bar up here in the top corner and type present on, um, and click it, this would actually take you to presenter mode and your, your sizes would be larger and different depending on how you've configured it. Now, I'm already in presenter mode and I've customized the font size further since then, so I'm not gonna do this because this would just, just mess things up and I'd have to go reset it all again. Um, but that is how you turn presenter mode on, is by present on. Um, to turn presenter mode off, we can't have present off because that would be way too easy. So what that's called is restore default fonts, which I never remember. I always think it's revert and I start typing revert and that doesn't take me anywhere and then I, I have to look it up. But to turn it off, you say restore default fonts. Um, and to make changes to these sizes, you type in present edit. And this will actually bring up an XML file with the settings for presenter mode. Now I'm at font size 20 right now, so this is not valid. Uh, but if you change this, save it, and then you have to restart Management Studio, then you can actually change the appearance of uh, presenter mode in general. So this is this is great if you ever have to, you know, show code on a projector or in front of a group or something like that. Presenter mode is here for you in Management Studio 2017 or later. Number 13, we're moving right along here. Colored connections. 
So if you connect to a whole bunch of different servers of varying uh, criticality, perhaps is a good way to say it, you can actually color code your servers by status bar. And what you do is you do this when you're connecting. So you open your connection window, and if you click on options here, you have an option for use custom color and a color picker box. So if we turn this on, uh, and I say use custom color, and I'm gonna use this beautiful shade of purple that I remember playing with back in Windows 3.1 when I was a kid and we got our first computer. Uh, it will not change the color of the current window, but if you open any new query windows, you're gonna see down here at the bottom, you now have this beautiful headache shade of purple. Um, and you can assign these on a per instance basis, on a per server basis. So maybe, maybe you know, production servers you have colored in red and, and development or yellow or something like that. You, you can create a, a further check on yourself of, okay, which server am I connected to now? What color is it down here? Um, and you can, you can set that up and it will actually keep those custom colors on a per server basis. Fortunately, I don't have to open any more query windows, so I don't have to see that color red again right now. Now, we've gone through all these configuration settings, and you can you can really customize Management Studio and Visual Studio in general uh, to have a ton of options, you know, your way, make it your way. How do we save that? Well, we can. Uh, this is built in because you never know, you know, when your, your computer might crash or your employer might re-image your, your machine and you lose everything, and that's that's just awful. I've been there. So if you go to Tools and you say Import and Export Settings, it will actually give you a wizard here where you can import or export uh, environment settings from Management Studio. So you can say Next, and you can actually pick what settings you want. And there are lots of settings in here uh, that you can place and it will generate a file. Uh, you can then have a file with with this configured the way you like it and you can go import that on other machines, you know, take it home, have set up your home PC the same way your work one is, if you can move files between the two, etc. So just because you, you worked so hard to get things set up the way you like it here doesn't mean you have to duplicate that effort everywhere else. You can actually export this information. Number 15, Object Explorer Filtering. So that's not going to show up as being very dramatic here because I only have a single database and it's only got a handful of tables. But if you've worked in large environments or if you ever find yourself in an environment where you now have you know, thousands of tables, filtering is going to, to help save you quite a bit. So you can filter pretty much any type of object in the SQL Server Object Explorer. I'm gonna use tables as an example, but if you right click on tables and say filter and then say filter settings, You'll get a box here that I'll zoom in on, and you can filter on a whole bunch of stuff. You can filter on the object name, on the schema name. You can also filter on owner and a couple others they've added over the years. Uh, I'd say name and schema are probably the two biggest. But then when you hit OK, it will actually go ahead and filter the objects you see. You know, maybe you're looking for, for a table with sales in the name, and there's a hundred of those. Um, you'd only see those, you can type more and filter further. You can filter on, like I said, almost any type of object in Object Explorer, you can filter on. Uh, you cannot filter on the database name, actually. I thought you could, uh, but it is one of the ones you cannot. But tables, views, settings, uh, login, security, things like that, pretty much any object you can filter on in Object Explorer. So if you have a, a lot of things going on in there, you can find what you're looking for with great efficiency because sitting and scrolling here in Object Explorer is no fun. Number 16, we have built-in reports in Management Studio that can actually be very helpful. And these are not uh, SQL Server reporting services or Power BI, this is actually a report that is built in Management Studio. You'll notice I don't have any anything set up with reporting here at all. Uh, but if I right click on a database and say, for example, reports, there's a whole bunch of built-in reports. Um, disk usage is one that I actually use fairly commonly. I like it, so it'll provide you, it's, it's simple data, but sometimes it helps to visualize, okay, how big are my files, right? There's a total of five gigabytes, here's the transaction log. Uh, I can see how much is used and unused of that. Here's the data files. Um, and then you can actually click the plus sign here and it'll give you a list of all the data files and how much space is used in them. 
So these reports are not, not super complicated, but they can be very helpful and they're built into Management Studio. So you don't need to install anything special or configure anything uh, to be able to use these. So those are the reports you can build in in SMS, SSMS. Full screen mode. So what full screen mode will do, uh, we're already full screen as you can tell here, right? I have SSMS taking up my entire monitor, uh, but full screen mode will take the text editor portion and make that full screen. Uh, so you can do this by going to view and hitting full screen, or you can do shift alt enter. So if I go to view and I say full screen, there we go. So now it will just go ahead and give me only the text editor right and I can undo it by clicking full screen again and it'll take me back to where I were so again if you're if you're presenting or not wanting wanting to get rid of everything else on your screen uh, for whatever reason full screen mode will do that for you in one click switching between tabs so when you have a whole bunch of file tabs open you can switch between them uh, very quickly using the keyboard here um, you have two ways to do it there's control tab uh, which will actually bring up a little window here and show you all of the tabs that are open and let you pick which one you want uh, and actually show you the full file path there too. So you can switch in between them just by hitting control tab. Um, you can also use control F6, which will just toggle between the tabs uh, without bringing up that little window. Now for me, I prefer control tab simply because I can do control tab with my left hand with one hand. For me, control F6 is a, is a two hand, uh, maneuver because I have a a, uh, a ergonomic keyboard and stuff, but control tab works for me and control tab fits in with, with other keyboard shortcuts as well. So if you have a bunch of tabs, you want to switch between what's open, control tab is what I recommend. Where is my current file, number 18? I'm working in a file and I don't remember where it's from or I need the path really quickly. A couple ways you can do this. Uh, first of all, if you were to just hover over the file tab, it will actually show you the entire path of where that file is located. So that's handy, but maybe we need it in a file somewhere um, and we don't want to sit and remember it and write it down. So we can right click and there's an option here for copy full path, right? So you can hit copy full path and it will literally just copy the full path of that file to the clipboard and now you can paste it and there's the full path of your file. Um, so that makes it very easy. You can also right click and say open containing folder uh, and it will go ahead and pop open Windows Explorer, which it did for me on a different monitor, just showing, hey, here's uh, where that file is located and here's the folder that's in. So you can get to it real quick. That's awesome. That's my favorite one so far. Is that a good that a good one? So here, yeah. I'll show you another quick one. This is this is not a SSMS feature, but this is a bonus. This is a Windows feature. If you have a file in Windows anywhere and you want to know, you want to copy the full path, if you hold down the shift key and you right click, you will get an option here called copy as path. You only get that option with the shift key. Uh, and copy as path will copy the entire path of the file for you to the clipboard. Um, the only catch here is when you paste it, it will now be in quotes, right? So this is ideal. This was, I think, designed to, you know, copy and paste something into a, a command prompt window or something like that. So that'll put quotes on it, but that's a Windows feature. You can do that anywhere in Windows. Uh, whereas this other one I just showed you will not put quotes on it and only works in SSMS. So if, if that's helpful at all, happy to uh, to point that out. So changing the case, and this is, this is not SSMS specific. Again, a lot of these features are Visual Studio. Uh, anything in Visual Studio will do it because SSMS is built on Visual Studio. But if you want to change the case of existing text, uh, you can highlight the text and you can use Control Shift U and that will uppercase whatever's highlighted. Similarly, Control Shift L will lowercase it. Now there's all kinds of plugins you can get for Management Studio or Visual Studio that will go through, you know, T-SQL or code in other languages and make things pretty. And those are great. Um, I've used those in a number of environments. But sometimes I don't have that available and I'm just looking to make sure that keywords are capitalized. So I can very quickly go and double click on a word, hit Control Shift U, capitalize it, et cetera, go to the next one. So keyboard shortcut for that. 
the SSMS clipboard ring number 20. Okay, this is this is a SSMS only feature, as far as I know, or Visual Studio, I guess. Um, and this will actually the last 20 values you had in your clipboard are saved. So you can go to the edit window and say cycle clipboard ring, or you can hit control shift V, which is what I usually do. And this will actually go ahead and resurrect the last up to the last 20 things that were in your clipboard. Right, so I just went and copied a whole bunch of things beforehand. Uh, but if you have, you know, multiple things in your clipboard, you want to alternate through quickly and not sit and copy and paste and copy and paste and copy and paste. It'll save the last 20 things for you, um, and that's just sitting there. But these are only things that you have copied in Management Studio. Uh, if you were to copy something to the clipboard from another program, it will not show up in this list. Uh, all right. Number 21, advanced editing. Uh, this is just extra text features you get. If you go to edit up here and click advanced, you get a bunch of options uh, where you can have, you know, make uppercase and lowercase I showed you. There's there's some move up and down. Uh, comment and uncomment I used a lot when I was a software developer and I was constantly looking to comment and uncomment blocks of code. It's control K, control C or control K and control U for uncomment. Um, but there's, there's a bunch of, of additional features you have in here just for, for quick text editing or formatting um, things. All right, number 22, block editing, or what's also known as column editing. And this, this showed up when in 2012 when Visual Studio, uh, or when SSMS became part of Visual Studio, or was built on it, I should say. And this is great. If you have a, a number of lines you need to edit the same way, you can do this. And you can either use uh, hold down the Alt key and click your mouse, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm holding down the Alt key and I'm clicking the mouse and I'm dragging down. And I realize it might hard, be hard to see, but I am highlighting three lines of text now. So I now have a selection that is a block. How is this useful? Well, like this, maybe it isn't, but you know, let's say I needed to to type a whole bunch of select statements at once. I could literally do all three lines, and now I'm just typing whatever, and it's editing all the lines in the block uh, that you have selected. You can also do that with with Alt Shift, and then just use the keyboard arrow keys to select. Um, but this is, you know, a lot of uh, people, you'll hear them make jokes about, oh, yeah, is your, is your text editor good? Can it do column editing? You know, so, yes, you can do column editing in SSMS as well. All right, number 23, the vertical scroll bar has a mapping mode um, that you may or may not know about. And I'm talking about the scroll bar over here on the side. Um, if you were to right-click on that, you actually do have an, a set of scroll bar options down here in this menu that pops up. Uh, and you can you can choose a bunch of things. This will actually take you back to tools, options, but it'll take you right to where you want to go, which is kind of nice and handy. Um, and you have, in the behavior tab, you have this use map mode for vertical scroll bar instead of bar mode. So what that'll do is if you click this, you'll notice now the scroll bar has gotten much wider and essentially has, um, you know, pictures of the text. And you can sit and scroll over it and it'll show you where you are in your file. So if you have a really long file and you want to quickly figure out where something is, uh, you can sit and scrub over it like this in map mode and it'll actually give you a preview. Uh, some people like this, some people don't. I, I tend to keep mine off, um, but I also I leave it on in like Visual Studio Code where it's on by default there. So I guess I just am used to not seeing it, but it is an option in SSMS. Number 24, registered servers. So Servers that you frequently connect to in Management Studio, you can save into a list and it calls this the list of registered servers. If you go to view and say registered servers, it'll pop it up right here. Um, and you'll notice that we have, I have no registered servers in Management Studio on this computer, but I do have registered studio servers in Azure Data Studio on this computer, which it is now pulling in. So there's actually a folder called Azure Data Studio uh, with the, registered servers I have sitting in Azure Data Studio, I don't have any registered here. But basically when you have a registered server, it makes it very easy to click on it, uh, open a query in it, open it in Object Explorer, you can create folders in here, you can sort them, um, you can do all kinds of things with them organized in this list of registered servers that it will maintain for you if you like. 
All right, number 25, templates. So we showed you code snippets earlier, uh, which were little, little inline things you can fire up. Uh, there's also a template explorer under the view menu in Management Studio. And what this will do is this will pop up more or less the same list, um, but in this form. So these are, these are templates. This is pre-baked code ready for uh, usage, and you can add your own options to it as well if you like. So maybe you want to you wanna back up a database, but you don't remember the T-SQL for backing up a database. Double click on this. It'll go ahead and open up that backup database template. And again, it basically has fill in the blanks here, you know, backup database, put your database name here, uh, put your location where it's going, put what options you like, et cetera. Um, so this will pop open a new file with that information, whereas the snippet will pop it into your existing file. Uh, but there is all kinds of, of pre-cooked code. And honestly, these are a lot of things that I don't bother to remember because I don't need to because they're in Template Explorer. If you were to ask me how to create an XML index, I don't remember how to do that. I don't think anyone does unless you're studying for a certification exam. Uh, but there's a template for it right here. So this will help you figure out filling out the blank, filling in the blanks without uh, having to go running to a web browser and get into books online. So those are templates. And speaking of web browsers, that's right. There is, in fact, a web browser built into SQL Server Management Studio if you really, really, really want to use it. Uh, you can do Control-Alt-R to get to it, or you can say View Other Windows Web Browser. And guess what? You now have a web browser where you can go wherever you like and surf the web from the convenience of SQL Server Management Studio uh, with very few other features. And I believe this is just... Uh, Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer shelled in at some point, but you can pop open Windows in Management Studio with web pages if you care. Now this next one's actually a kind of a neat feature because this is something that I have needed in the past and it wasn't there and now it is, but you can actually compare different query plans with SQL Server Management Studio. And I'm not gonna say this is you know, completely full featured or pretty like some other tools out there, but it gets the job done. So let's say we have a we have a query we're running and we're looking to see what the plan looks like. So we're gonna run this query. We're going to enable the actual execution plan. We're gonna go ahead and execute it. Here we have our query. Here we have our execution plan, okay? So take one of the plans you need and you need to go ahead and save it. So we'll say, you know, save execution plan as and save it off to a file. I already have it in a file, but I'm gonna overwrite it anyway, just to make sure it's this plan. Okay, yes, I'll replace it. So that's that plan. Now we're gonna do the same thing for a different query. Uh, and we're going to capture that plan as well. Right now I'm selecting star, I'm selecting a whole bunch more columns, right? Which is uh, what Deborah in the previous session told us not to do if we don't need to. So now we have a much different plan because we're selecting more data. Now at this point we have the current plan and we have the previous one we saved. If we right click on it and say compare show plan and then pick the file of the first one, it will actually go ahead and open a comparison tool and you can pick different objects or different nodes in the plans from each and it will go ahead and compare them, compare all the properties of them up in the corner. And if they're not equal, it'll put this little not equal sign next to it and show you what the differences are. So, you know, we have an index scan here and we have an index scan here. Here's the differences between those. Uh, maybe we'll look at the, the parallelism gather stream uh, option or part of the query plan here, we can see, okay, some are the same. Some parts of these plans are different. Um, if you're looking to compare two plans, this is a, a built-in way to get the job done. And I had no clue this was hiding in Management Studio. Now I have to close out of all these. All right. Number 28, this is something I've needed to do only a handful of times, but it was so simple, I completely forgot how to do it. If I need to remove a server from the connection dialog, so when I'm trying to connect to SQL Server here, or to a server, and I've got my, my drop-down list of servers I wanna connect to, maybe I don't want something in this list, right? Maybe I wanna get rid of something. So if you hover over it, don't click on it, just hover over it and hit the delete key, it'll get it out of that list for you. If you ever have a need to remove something from the connection list, you could do it, you know. Kind of kind of hiding in plain sight there. 
and we're almost done and we're right on time. This is excellent. Number 29, we have some startup settings here. You can kind of choose what SSMS does when you first open it. Uh, if you go to tools and options and then environment and startup, you have a drop down here, so you can choose what do you want it to do? Do you want it to just open Object Explorer, open a new query window, open both, open Activity Monitor, if you like looking at Activity Monitor, uh, which I didn't even show, uh, or just open an empty environment and let you do what you want. You have, you have some choices here of how things start up in Management Studio for you. Uh, number 30, toggle the results pane. I've been doing this the whole time. Control R will turn the query results on or off. So if you ever find that they're in the way, like a lot of times people will just drag it down to the bottom and forget about it, whereas Control R will just make it appear and disappear for you. Number 31 is the database scripting task. So if you need to script out a database in terms of maybe you want to create a script that contains the data, maybe you want to create a you know script with an insert statement for every row in a table for some reason, you can do this uh, through SSMS. If you go to tasks and then say generate scripts, you will get some options here of what are we going to script? So do we want to script all database objects or do we want to script specific objects? Maybe we only care about scripting out a certain table here. So I'm going to pick the table I want or multiple tables. Then you get to pick what are we scripting it out to. Um, you can save it as a notebook, actually, uh, like Deborah was uh, demonstrating in the last session, working with notebooks. Uh, usually, I would just save to a file. Uh, it's probably your best bet, especially if it's something really, really large. Or you can do it in a new query window. And then you can click this advanced button here and pick exactly what is included in this script. Do we want to have headers? Do we want to have script bindings? Do we want to have a specific version that it scripts for? So we're scripting for 2019. Do we want to script the data out, which is, uh, I have to scroll down the menu, but you can do that. Are we scripting types of data or schema only? You get a ton of options here of what it builds into these scripts for you. And then it will go ahead and script out whatever to wherever you want it to go. And then finally, the last little, uh, thing which is not entirely practical but I think it's fun. Um, SQL Server has long supported Unicode. Uh, Unicode object names have been supported in SQL Server for a long time but they were not fully supported in Management Studio until I believe 2017. So you can actually do things like create a database name with an emoji. So because it's a technical presentation and we need a cat, I have a statement here for create database named cat, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, uh, refresh my object explorer over here, and lo and behold, we have our database named cat. And because if you just say create database, uh, it will also pick the file names to be the name of the database as well. If I use cat database and go ahead and look at the files, uh, you will see that the files are named cat emoji.mdf and cat emoji log.ldf. So you have full Unicode support, not only in SQL Server, which has been there for a while in object names, but now Management Studio can do that for you as well. Uh, and with that, that is all I have. So I'm gonna skip back real quick to my slide here. Um, just to show you, this is my contact information. And if you would like to download the script I just demonstrated for you, uh, go to the big highlighted URL at the bottom there, bapusateri.com slash r slash ssms hyphen tips, uh, and you'll be able to download the, the file that I just showed you. Oh, great stuff. Thanks, Bob. No problem. Thanks for having me. Any other, any questions or anything before I uh, clear off for the next person? I don't see any. Wow. I just want to make sure you never show Amy how to name databases that way. 